Okay, hello YouTube. I was going to do a video with me playing Mittens Bot, um, and I still might. I might play one more game just so you can see me suffer through the game. Uh, I've played so far, this is all the games I've played against Mittens Bot so far. I've played one, two, three, four, five, six games. The best game I played was my second, which I posted to YouTube. You can watch the video on that where I actually did reasonably well with it. Uh, this game was, I had one other game that was like the most gut wrenching. Uh, where I actually had the white pieces against Mitten Spot, and I should have actually won this game. Uh, this was the most gut wrenching game because when I played this particular game, like if you look at the evaluations and the lines, I actually out computed the computer, and I was so proud of myself for finding this line. I played this line with H4 and just played for like a blatant attack, and the computer gave this evaluation of Slight Edge Black the whole time. But I actually made my attack land first with this sacrificial attack that even Stockfish missed. So like after knight g5 here, this was the cool part. So I play h5, and then if you notice here, after h6, the computer gives this eval of negative 1.2. Well, I find a sack that the computer completely missed. And it's just an absolutely brilliant move. Um, I play knight g5, and the computer's still giving slight edge black. Knight takes e3, and then I played this really awesome move. I played rook h8, which is not even on the computer's radar. And that move should... And, oh yes, it gives it to me. It says it's brilliant. Thank you. Because you notice what just happened to the evaluation bar. So I actually managed, as a human being, I managed to play better than the machine. But also as a human being, and the fact that I'm not a top player like Hikaru or Magnus, like Magnus would have finished this game brilliantly, or Hikaru would have, but I don't have perfect technique after I play a brilliant move. So, like, after bishop h8, I played queen h5, and then knight c2, king d2, um, and unfortunately I didn't have perfect technique, but I played all of this stuff right, this, this combination. Um, I ended up playing all of this, the computer backs up, this is correct, and I'm at, like, plus three here, and I just, uh, queen d5 is correct, and then here's where I stopped playing accurately, I play queen f7, which is good, but queen b7 is best. King here. Uh, king c2 is still good. b3, king d2 is still good. Queen e7, and then I trade queens, which is a mistake. Like, and that's something, that's a mistake. I'm going to talk about that in a later video, about how you can actually make your position worse by trading queens. Uh, and it's a bad habit to get into. It's one of the habits that will really hurt your game. Uh, the, the reason that white's better in this position is because black's king is unsafe, so... Just playing a move like queen to c4 and just continuing to play for an attack is the way to go. I was greedy to play queen to c7 because I knew the rook and pawn in game was winning. Uh, but it also improved black's position pretty significantly because it's actually kind of hard to hold this pawn. And try as I might, this pawn is always going to be dangerous. So I have to be cautious about how I approach winning the position from here. But I wasn't careful enough, um, even though I did play a, a large series of best moves. I think I was just kind of hoping that this game was going to convert the way a normal game would convert against a human, where like they would just like exchange rooks and the king and pawn in game is a win. But again, you're, when you're playing against a bot, you know whether it's an adorable kitten or whether you know no matter what the the icon looks like, whenever you're playing against a machine, you can pretty much guarantee that they're going to play uh, chess with uh, perfect technique. And, of course, that's exactly what this computer did. It just gave itself chances the entire time. And uh, even when I went after everything, uh, all of a sudden, rook h1, and I'm in trouble. And I didn't respond to this trouble correctly. Like, I, I took, and I played here, he took, and then king f3. But this is, like, really my last moment to shuffle my king over as quickly as possible. Because once I play king here, uh, this pawn is just too dangerous. And my pawns are not good enough to counter this. And it's weird. It's a weird position because my king can't actually find shelter over here. Because, like, if I play king g3, there's this, you know, the doubled pawns are actually, they can do something. So it, it's, it, it, now black has gotten an equal rook and pawn in game. And now I, 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 my position is, unfortunately, uh, at this point, it's no longer winnable. But I just needed to just hold the draw. I just needed to play something like... You know, king takes g2. Instead, I still kind of, I think I had this fantasy that I was going to win. So I played d5 and blundered away the, the draw, and then I lost. And this is this is how games against machines go. Um, and it's just very, very frustrating. So I will play one more game against mittens with white. So you can watch me get frustrated one last time. Um, so I'm going to choose mittens. I'm going to play with white. 
Uh, I want to play quickly because I do want this to be like around an eight minute video. So I'm going to try to play this game in three minutes and you can kind of watch me, I guess, get into trouble against mittens pretty quickly. So, so far, so theory. Uh, this is just me playing against a bot. Uh, the quicker you play against bots, pretty much the worse of a chance you have. <laughs> you know, it's, you're going to make a tactical mistake at some point. Okay, so, so far, still within my preparation. Uh, like knight a6 is a line, so is castle's kingside. Knight a6 is a line here, so is knight c6, so is a6. b6 is weird. Okay, so I'm going to go for f3 because clearly the idea is bishop b7 putting pressure. So I'd like to get the pressure off of that. And then I think I just want to play queen d2 and just play chess, like just play like a normal type of English attack setup. So I'm just going to castle queenside, and then I'm going to play this English attack and just go for a pawn storm. Like if you are going to beat computers, like these are the types of positions where you do have a chance. Uh, because computers are very bad at figuring out whose attack is going to arrive first. And they're very bad at making, uh, they'll make slack moves in a position uh, where they really should be being more aggressive. So you do have a chance, because sometimes they will misevaluate these positions horribly. Okay, so I'm going to play g5 and g6, which would be definitely correct against a human. Against a computer, I don't know. Uh, this is looking good. Okay, so we're going to take. Uh, we've really loosened up the e6 square really significantly here. Uh, we're going to play rook on d to g1, and now we're going after this, we're going after this, and we're going after... Uh, we've got pressure here. Oh, mitten spot. You are frustrating. Um, bishop f6. I want to kind of play... I want to play knight f5, but they've got knight b3 check. So I think mainly I'm just going to sidestep the check right now. I'm okay with mittens taking stuff, just not with check. Uh, okay, rook c8. I can play knight f5 here, and then knight b3 hits the queen. So again, I don't have it. Uh, I guess a simple enough improvement is just rook g2 and rook g1. So we'll just improve slowly and see what the computer does. Um, again, just rook g1. I don't see anything with knight f3. It doesn't mean it's not there. I just don't see it. Um, f4, f5. At some point, f4, f5 is super tempting. But the problem is, of course, the e-pawn will hang. Uh, I need some way to make progress here. Bishop g5 is very, very tempting. Okay, so let's play bishop g5 and hope that the computer takes and goes after this pawn. Or just goes after this pawn. Yeah, because like my gut instinct was that this was not a great way for the machine to go, but I could be completely wrong. Uh, but I got to go with my gut. I'm probably completely wrong. Uh, that's usually the case with computers. Okay, so I got to take this way. Knight e4. I missed knight e4. Ah, there's always some tactic. Against computers, there's always a tactic. I missed knight e4. I, I kept thinking I was the one with resources at the end, because I have bishop e6, I have queen d4, I have attacks on these dark squares, light squares, everything. Um, but maybe it's just the computer that's got the resources. But, I mean, we'll just try playing close to what I thought the correct ideas were. So we're going to play queen d4, and um, yeah, let's check. Maybe I played another game where I'm past the computer's move horizon. Maybe I get lucky. So queen, king d2, and maybe the computer's misassessing this again. Or maybe I'm just completely dead in every possible way that somebody can be completely dead. Um, what is the computer up? A whole piece? So i got to break through with my attack now, or the game's over. And the game's just probably over anyway, because I have to... Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's the frustration. Just, just you know, playing against absolutely perfect play all the time. And Family Fork. Yeah, I'm dead here. I was dead here pretty much regardless at a certain point. So queen back, everything. Yeah, I sh eh. There's no way I can break through with any kind of attack here. And my attack fails to break through. Okay. So this is just going to be another loss against Mittens. I'll just resign right here. Um, I'm sure the assessment right now is incredibly low for white. Against a person, I would have played a few more moves. I would have given something a shot. Uh, against a machine, I'm just going to cut my losses just because 
I know the machine knows how to defend in a position like this. There's absolutely no point in uh, playing any further. Uh, if you can just, I'll just show you the analysis real quick, just to give you an idea. Like, I mean, that, that I think that's the thing with playing against computers is like once you know you have a disadvantage, like no matter how like much, much chances you would have against a person, no matter how active the position looks. I mean, you can see the computer assessment is minus five. You know, I basically have no chance here. Now, somewhere in here before I lost the material, this is probably still just advantage white. So like right in here, it's clearly advantage white. It's just a matter of of playing this position well enough to, to win from here. So clearly this is advantage white. And of course I had a huge advantage in the other game. Like I just showed you, I had like a plus three, plus four and wasn't able to convert it. This is like plus 1.5. And I think I made a mistake like right in here. I think bishop g5 is probably a pretty severe blunder. Yeah. And then I just never recovered from it. Uh, figuring out exactly how to continue from here, for, for me anyway, and short time control, it's really, really difficult. Um, I would have to hunker down and and really look at the position and try to figure it out. In a tournament game, I would have more of a chance. Uh, I guess the idea here is something like, what is the computer saying? Oh, knight on c to e2, because we got to keep control of the f3 square. So it's like continuing to, to make progress, but kind of with a safety pin, you know, holding on to that pawn. Uh, but yeah, no, computers play these types of positions really well. You know, stockfish play stockfish in this position, and, you know, white's winning every time. Or even just a stronger player than me you know, plays white in these positions. You know, you give this position to high, uh, like a Hikora Nakamura or a, or a Magnus Carlsen, um, and they're going to win with white. So anyways, that's the last time I'm going to play mittens. I hate playing against bots. It's just dumb. Uh, overwhelmingly, mittens pretty much destroyed me um, in most of the games that we played. Uh, I got advantages in tons of openings against mittens. I got an advantage in the Evans Gambit. I got an advantage in... Uh, is, as you can see in that Austrian attack where I made that exchange sack that even Stockfish 15 missed. I got an advantage in this game. Uh, so very frustrating. I got a whole bunch of advantages, just never able, able to convert. And of course, the second game I played against Mittens, I got a draw, and I guess that's going to be my best result. So I'm going to have to live with that. Uh, so anyways, this is uh, playing against this beast of a bot uh, that will give you an advantage and then just, you know, just play like a machine um, after that. It's just frustrating. Anyways, hope you learned something new about chess. Hope you enjoyed watching uh, me uh, fail <laughs> against Mittens um, and just uh, just how frustrating it is to play against this bot. Uh, go ahead and give it a shot yourself. Uh, see if see if you can do any better. But I mean, as far as training goes, uh, it's it's probably it's some pretty frustrating training. <laughs> so, anyways, thank you very much for watching.